Hey y'all, this is Chris, and this is your Globetrotter 30 foot. We're gonna start again right here at the front with this solar guard. I'm gonna reach up on either side of this thing and level it out. Now, doing that is gonna allow us to open this front window. This front window does open outward and it is blocked by the solar guard. So in this one instance, you're gonna to have to open this on the outside first. All the rest of the windows do open from the inside, but I will mention, especially in the summertime, the windows tend to stick to the rubber gaskets. So if you've undone the latches and you're pushing on the handle to open the window and they don't open, don't force it. Just come outside with a little plastic scraper, an old credit card, come right around the bottom edge of the window here and free it from that gasket and you'll be able to open it from the inside. Opening the center solar guard is also gonna allow us to open the side solar guards. There are rubber gaskets around the edges of these, but over time leaves and dirt will get past them and the windows back there are gonna get dirty. So if you wanted to clean the windows, the two screws have a T-shape instead of a screw shape. So you give them just a quarter turn, they're gonna open, they're gonna hinge away from the trailer. Please make sure that when you do so that you've got a hold of them. If the window gets slammed open by the wind, there's not a stop and it will put a crease there. The next thing we're gonna talk about is gonna be your battery box. It's around behind your propane cover here. In here, you've got AGM batteries. That is gonna facilitate the usage of your solar panels. These batteries are sealed, so you're not gonna to have to come out here and check the water level on them. I do wanna make you aware of two fuses in here, one for the tongue jack. This is just a large 30 amp blade fuse. And another one in here for the solar plug. This is just your standard 15 amp. Solar plug is right here next to the battery box. That will enable you to plug in a portable solar panel. It's gonna augment your onboard solar, so it's gonna to add to it. You'll also note next to the solar plug is the handle for your spare tire. There's a cotter pin and a slide pin. You want to release those. Your spare is going to slide out towards you. It's going to be 80 PSI on your spare tire, just like your road tires. Tongue jack is next. There is a light in case you've got to connect the tongue jack at night, and it is power. This particular tongue jack does not stop immediately when you release the trigger. So you want to allow it to come to a stop before you reverse directions, but if you forget and suddenly reverse directions, that large 30 amp blade fuse is gonna absorb some of the amperage. It's gonna keep it from popping immediately, but if you continue to switch back and forth rapidly, you will eventually pop that fuse. Now there is a manual crank that you can fit down here under the bubble that will allow you to manually crank it on or off your tow vehicle. If you need to manually crank it on or off, check the fuse first. The tongue jack is wired directly into the batteries and it could just be as simple as a pop fuse. Now, under this silver cover is where we'll find your propane tanks. You've got 30 pound propane tanks on this trailer. They are already full for you. In between is an automatic regulator. So if you've got both tanks open, when one tank runs empty, it'll automatically switch over to the other one. There is a little post on this regulator that you can point at one tank or another, and it will pull from that tank if it is open. However, there is not a gauge here, so I do recommend that you run one tank open and run one tank closed. So that way when it runs empty, you actually have to come outside and physically open the tank so you're aware that you're running on that second tank and you can be a little more conservative with your propane. I also wanna mention around the corner on the other side of your battery box is an external propane port. This will feed off of your onboard propane bottles. It is a pre-regulated low pressure service, so up to 25,000 BTUs, and you can use that to run a little camp and stove. We'll come around the corner here and I will point out your gross vehicle weight and tire pressure sticker is here. Again, it's gonna be 80 PSI on your tires. You wanna maintain that pressure for best towing and also best tire wear. Now these studs here at all four corners of the trailer is how you will manually raise or lower your stabilizers. This trailer has power stabilizer jacks. So when we get around to that control panel, we'll use that to drop them down. One of your outside dry storage compartments. So this one has a double rubber gasket. It's gonna do a good job of keeping the water out of there. You can also lock these with a key. The lights in these storage compartments do not come on and off as you open and close the door. So I will recommend that you go ahead and turn them off. So that way, as you use the master battery disconnect switch and turn the trailer on, you're not hitting it with a large surge of electricity. We'll head further back. The next thing we're gonna talk about is your on-demand water heater. This is not a tankless water heater. It does have a little half gallon tank, just less than half gallon tank. Um, but there's not a drain plug. So for you guys, it's gonna be basically maintenance free. Now the control that you'll interface with is in the bathroom and the default for that is on. So if you've turned the trailer batteries on, there's already gonna be power to this, but it's on demand. So you actually have to draw some water through it to get it to do something. 
The thing I want you guys to be aware of is that it is propane fired. So every time you use it, there will be a hot propane exhaust coming out of here. Just make sure you haven't blocked it with anything flammable. Next to that at the top, we're gonna have your cable and satellite port. They are labeled cable and satellite and they're gonna terminate in different places inside the trailer. So when we get inside, we'll talk again about that. Below that is your camp power. It's a 50 amp service on this trailer at 125 volts. This is your shore cord. It's 25 feet long and it will get rolled up and put inside the trailer. It's gonna come home with it. There's also a cap that you can put on the trailer end of the plug to keep dirt and dust out of there while you're traveling. Next, we have your city water connection. This is where you connect your water hose at your camping site for your on-demand water. This has a built-in 50 PSI pressure regulator, so you don't need to add an external pressure regulator. But it is also plumbed through the onboard water pump. So if you're staying at a camping site that has weak water pressure, you can turn on the onboard water pump and it will boost the pressure at all your faucets. But this will not fill the onboard fresh tank. That is on the other side of the trailer. And remember, the fresh tank system and the city water system are separate. So you don't necessarily need water in your fresh tank if you know you're going to connect to your city water when you get to your camping site. Below that is a waste tank cleanout valve. So when you attach your water hose here, it puts water directly into the black waste tank, which is where the toilet empties. It's designed to help you flush that one out. We'll talk again about that when we get down here to where the waste cleanout is. Next is going to be your outdoor shower. Now, when you guys are using the outdoor shower with the onboard fresh water tank to get pressure here, you will have to turn on the onboard water pump. When you're connected to your city water, the city water is gonna provide pressure throughout the trailer, so you will already have water pressure here. And with the on-demand water heater, the default for the control panel is on. So as long as your propane's open and you open the hot water valve, you will also have hot water here within about 10 seconds. Further back, we've got another storage compartment here. just like the one we already looked at with the light here at the rear. Now below that is gonna be your waste clean out. You do have a light in case you've got to connect at night. The handles are color coordinated. So the black handle is for the toilet and the gray handle is for the sinks and the showers. Always begin with the black tank. Before you pull that valve, I want you to connect your water hose to the waste clean out and start to introduce fresh water. This is a gravity drain, so you're gonna need the maximum volume of water to help carry all that solid waste out the first time. So fill it as full as you're comfortable. I'm gonna show you how you can look in the window and set up the monitor so that you can watch the status of your tanks as you're filling and emptying them. Make sure you don't overfull the black tank. Pull the valve towards you. It is a gate valve, so you've got a pipe with a gate across it, and when you pull that valve, that gate frees and allows the water to come rushing out. And you will notice the water comes out of this port much faster then you can get it back into the waste clean out valve. So when you see the flow diminish, close the valve and fill it right back up to the top with fresh water. You're gonna fill and empty this tank two to three times until that flow goes from muddy to clear. And once it's clean, you're gonna close the valve and allow a little water to back fill into it so you've got something in there for your chemical to dissolve and diffuse into. I will typically fill it until it reads about 5%. That is usually the first number you'll see on the gauge. Turn the water off and go inside and add the toilet, add the chemical into the toilet right then so that way you don't forget. Leave it in there all the time. So as you tow the trailer around, it's gonna slosh around in there and help keep the inside of it clean. Come back outside and do the gray tank second. That gray tank is gonna have mostly soapy water from your sinks and showers, and it's gonna help wash this pipe out. Take care that you do not open both valves at the same time. If you do, the black tank will flow into the gray tank and contaminate it. And you shouldn't leave your valves open at your camping site. You will not be able to create a flow through situation. The water that you need inside the waste tank to catch your solid waste is just gonna run out. So keep your valve shut at your camping site if you have the convenience of keeping your sewer hose attached. Uh, we'll come around the corner here. At the top on the back, you do have a backup camera. This camera has a microphone. So whoever's doing the directing back here, if they speak towards the camera, they can be heard where the monitor is. Down below, we've got another dry storage compartment. In here, is actually your shore cord. This is the one that's gonna go home with you guys. Below that is your bumper or your trunk storage. This is your wet storage compartment. So when this is closed, it's actually gonna still be open on the ends. So don't put anything in this one that you're worried about getting wet. One final outside storage compartment here. 
with the light to the rear. Now, the next thing we'll talk about is the fill port for your onboard fresh water tank. This is just a gravity port, so you're gonna stick your water hose in here and fill it up. Like I mentioned, you can look in the main door and watch the status of the tanks on the tank monitor, but if you lose track of the fresh tank as you're filling it and you overfill it, it's gonna come out of the vent port right here next to that, so don't worry about it. Now you need to cycle through the water in here every two weeks. After two weeks, the water will start to taste a little stale, and after 30 days, it will start to smell like feet. The drain for the fresh tank is actually behind the forward tire on this side. So if you stick your head around the front of the tire, you'll be able to see a little white petcock that has a flag on it. That flag is pointed to the rear of the trailer when it's closed and you'll spin it around and point it to the front of the trailer to allow it to drain. Next is gonna be the back side of your vent hood. Now, there are two little tabs that are keeping that door shut. You wanna push those up and out of the way to allow it to vent. Make sure you have it secured when you're towing. Down here at the bottom, we've got the exhaust for your furnace. Make sure that you haven't blocked this with anything flammable. Anytime you use the furnace, there will be a hot exhaust coming out of there as well. Next to that, you have your external AC plug. This is just your standard 15 amp AC, and it's only available when you're plugged into your shore service. The inverter is not going to power this plug. Finally, you have the control panel for your stabilizer jacks. Now, you have Stabilizers at all four corners, but they will not lift and they will not level. So make sure that you have leveled the trailer and disconnected your, tongue, your tow vehicle before you draw these down. You simply have the rear control and the forward control and they operate in the up or down manner. They can be run simultaneously. <laughs> Now they will stop on their own when they get enough resistance, but in here on this slick concrete, I will go ahead and stop them myself, and that's what I did. Please remember to bring them up before you tow out. That is kind of the most important thing about them. Once you've got them all the way up, bump the buttons a couple of times just to make sure they're seated. All right. We're gonna grab some keys and we're gonna go over your entry door. You do have two full sets of keys for this trailer. Now, you've got two doors here. You've got a main entry door and you've got your screen door. When you close these, they must be paired together. If you have the screen door closed and you slam the main door onto the screen door, you're gonna wind up flattening it out over time. It's very important that they're secured together when you close them. And you do have to slam the door a little bit because you've got a thick gasket here. If you don't close it hard enough, it's not gonna close all the way. It can be pushed firmly, but the door was designed to be slammed. So go ahead and give it a little force. Now, <clears throat> The large key with the brass end is your deadbolt key, and the smaller key with the, lat with the silver end is for the latch. The deadbolt has a post. Make sure it's not sticking out when you close the door, but make sure you're using this when you're towing. This is gonna do a much better job of keeping the door shut than the claw latch. Also, don't leave your keys in the door when you open the door all the way. There's not enough space back there for the key. You'll put a dent in a very expensive panel and you will probably break the end of your key off. Now, to fold your step up, the first thing I want you to do is take your thumbs and push it on the hinges and fold that lower step until it's straight up against the upper step. From here, you're gonna roll it onto that upper step and in order to stow them both, you will lift slightly to release the hinges and you will slam it up underneath. Please make sure that when you do so that your fingers are out of the way so you don't pinch them just like so. Now you can grab one hook or another to bring them out. They are connected, but when you bring these up, don't just pop them. I want you to hold them up so it doesn't catch the step as it passes. Make sure they're both sides are secure. And then to get the lower step out, I want you to lift the rear of the step and push the front edge towards the trailer. If you allow it to come forward, you'll wind up with the step upside down. 
So push it towards the trailer and roll it all the way around, just like so. Now as we come inside, I will point out, you've got a dual light control here for the ceiling light and also for the LED awning light strip. Above that, you've got the two lights in the front of the trailer over the lounge here. The next one is going to be the cabinet accent light above. Finally, at the very top, you have the switch for the overhead entry light right here above the main entry door. Come on in here. Now around the corner, we have your awning control and below that we have your master battery disconnect switch. So when you're storing the trailer, you will turn it off like this. Remember, this switch will disable the entire trailer, including the refrigerator. So you want to bear that in mind. Next, below your lounge here is a bed that will pull out. This portion of the bed is unsupported, so make sure whoever's sleeping here is not doing a bunch of jumping jacks. Below that, of course, you've got a little storage in here with a couple of tubs in there. Now above us is where we'll find your radio and your DVD player. This radio does not boot up immediately, so expect it to take anywhere from 30 to 45 seconds before it starts to make sound. There is also an app that you can download to the phone. It is called Fusion Link that will enable you to control the radio from your phone. You're going to press this button here, and then you're going to select Bluetooth. Now the little code to pair it is this little MSRA770, but to get that up here on your phone, you got to press these three lines here at the right side. Go to Bluetooth, Connections, and then you must make it discoverable. Now that will appear on your phone, and it will allow you to pull any music that you have on your phone. We'll give it back to the FM radio. We're going to press the power button to mute it, and then in order to turn it off, we'll hold our finger on here for just a moment. Just like so. Now next to that is a DVD Blu-ray player, and in between is just a standard 12-volt charge port. Behind this box is where you will find the termination point for the satellite port on the side of the trailer. The trailer is set up so that you can add your satellite receiver here and connect your dish to the trailer. If you add a splitter box behind there and plug the receiver and the DVD player both into that splitter box, it will pass the signal for both items onto both televisions onto the HDMI 1 slot, which is currently where the DVD player is. All right. Trade me spots there. And put your sink cover back on here. Now, <clears throat> I will mention that the table will also convert to a bed. There are some shorter legs in the wardrobe here. To remove the table from the legs, there is not only a button at the top that you need to push in as you kind of smack on the bottom side of the table to free it. And then to remove the legs, of course, you're going to push the button on the floor and unscrew them. Just like so. Very simple. Of course, behind here we do have access to some more storage as well. Now, over here below the television, we've got three control monitors and a light switch. This is simply the switch for the lights over the dinette. All the way on the right-hand side is your solar monitoring panel. The solar system in this trailer is automatic, so as long as there's sunlight on the panel, it is already charging your batteries. You don't have to hit the setup of the select to make that happen, but those will enable us to switch if you ever want to make the lithium upgrade. Now you can change the display. It's currently on watts, but you also have a voltage display and a kilowatt hour display. There is the amps, another voltage display, and finally back to watts. Next to that, we will have your sea level monitor. This is how you will normally monitor your battery level. That is 13.2 volts coming out of your batteries. And then also the tank levels. Please remember the tank levels are displayed in a percentage. So your fresh tank is 15% full. The gray tank is empty as well as the black tank. Now on any of these water tanks, if you press the button for that tank twice, you get a dot that appears next to that digit. 
the dot will hold this value on the screen for about five minutes. So as you're filling and emptying the tank, you'll be able to watch the status through the window here. Also on this control is where we'll find the onboard water pump switch. This is an on-demand water pump. It's gonna pressure up and stop. It's not gonna come back on until you create a demand. So if you guys are boondocking, you can leave it on during the day without fear of it drawing your batteries down. Next to that is your inverter control. The button on the right-hand side will turn that on. And then you do have a bit of a display here. So you'll have your voltage, your shore power, and then the third display that's blank right now is the draw. So when you're actually using the inverter, you'll see what it's drawing through there. Remember, the inverter provides an AC service or an alternating current service when you're camping on your batteries. The batteries only contain direct current or DC. The televisions and the entertainment devices will not run off of DC, so if you want to use only those devices, you must turn the inverter on. Also, it is only 1,000 watts, so you are limited to what you can draw through there. You do have one plug over here by the wall with a light blue strip on it that will work off of that inverter circuit. Remember again, it's only a thousand watts. So be careful what you're drawing through there. Lastly, to turn it off, you must hold your finger on the power button until you get the display to flash. Flash, and that's what this little sentence right here says. Next, we have your refrigerator. No, oh, I'm sorry, let's back up for just a second. We're gonna switch over here to the vent hood. Remember, you must have the door released on the outside and you'll know pretty quick if you've forgotten to do so. And then the light switch there. Below that is the range. We're going to turn the knobs over here to light, and you will have to hold them in initially to get the gas to flow. Click the igniter, just like so. Now, if you've been cooking on these and they're nice and hot, give them a chance to cool before you close the lid. The lid is made of tempered glass, and if it gets too hot, it could possibly shatter. Below is your microwave. Remember, your microwave is only available when you're plugged into your shore service. This microwave has a convection and a broiler feature. However, it is going to default as a microwave. Now the convection and the broiler feature is a fan and an element, just like your oven at home, and that's what the little rack and the pan are for. So please remember to remove those when you're using it as a microwave. All right, now we'll go over your refrigerator. This is a residential compressor style refrigerator. It will run off of AC or DC. When you're plugged into shore service, it's pulling on AC, and if you pull your shore plug, it's gonna automatically switch over to DC. There's nothing that you guys will have to do to make that happen. Across the top, you've got your power button. You will have to hold your finger on that power button for about five seconds to get it to turn on. And then your temperature control. One through five, one being the warmest and five, of course, being the coldest. This is your refrigerator temperature and your freezer temperature and there is also a night mode. In night mode, it will make the lights dim and it will also keep the fan in there a little quieter so that way it's not keeping you up as you're trying to sleep. Remember, this refrigerator takes two or three hours to get completely cold. We do recommend you plug it in and get it cold overnight on your AC power. If it's completely cold, without an external power source, it's gonna stay cold in there for five or six hours all by itself, but because it will run on the batteries, you can leave the house batteries turned on, and you're charging those batteries as you tow. So you should be able to arrive at your camping site with your refrigerator still completely cold and your batteries fully charged, but it must have been completely cold when you set out. Please make sure if you remember, or if you're headed down the road with your master battery switch turned on, that you must have the water pump turned off. If the water pump's on and you've got water in your fresh water tank, you could inadvertently hit a bump, cause one of the faucets to open and you'll come into a wet trailer. So I do recommend you turn as many things off as possible, but the most important thing to have off when you're traveling down the road is the water pump. All right, so we'll head back this direction. Oh, I forgot, below the refrigerator is your breaker and fuse box. All of your breakers are listed on the sticker below. The one at the very end is the GFI reset for all the plugs on the trailer. So you must turn it all the way off in order to allow it to reset, and it will not reset if you're not plugged into a 110 power source. All of your fuses are just your standard side blade fuses. They are various different amperages, and they are listed on the sticker to the right. When one of these goes out, you're going to get a little red LED light that appears next to that that you should be able to see through this window here. And of course next to that is your combination carbon monoxide and propane detector. Now this one is hardwired into the house batteries, so you don't have to worry about checking the battery on that one. Next we've got the bathroom. Now in the bathroom at the top you have a manual vent fan. This one gets pushed open and a little red button is going to turn it on. You must pull it closed. Remember this one is fully manual, so if it starts to rain you will have to close this one on your own. Here on the wall of course we have your light switch, and next to that is the control for the water heater. 
Now, like I mentioned, the control for this water heater is on as the default. You can turn it off by pressing that little red button. You turn it right back on. It is set to 118 degrees, and that's what most folks are used to it coming out of the shower at. It will get as warm as 124 degrees or as cool as 96 degrees. Like I mentioned, it's on demand, so all we have to do is create a demand. And it's going to come on on its own. You will get an indicator here when it works and a little flame in the middle when it lights. Once the temperature crosses about 110, it should already be hot. And it only takes about 10 seconds or so. Now once it temps up, it's going to hold that temperature until you either run it out of water or you run it out of propane. So bear that in mind as you're showering. Now, around the other way is the toilet. In order to get the toilet to flush, there's a lever on the right hand side. You'll give that a partial step to fill that bowl. A full step will flush and of course you will add your chemical straight down into the toilet. You can use the toilet to relieve the pressure on the water lines. So we're going to turn the water pump off here. If we were connected to city water, we would close the faucet on the city water connection and then we'll come back in here and step on that line to relieve that pressure. It's also going to clear the water in the bowl so that way as you're towing it won't slosh out onto the floor and make a mess. Alright, next we'll go over the, sh the shower. Now the shower door is made of glass and you do have a little tab here that's keeping it shut. You want to make sure that it doesn't come flapping open while you're headed down the road. It could possibly shatter. You can actuate this tab from the inside of the shower and that will help keep the door shut. So that way if you turn and bump it with your elbow, you won't knock it open and spill a bunch of water on the floor. In here at the top, we have the same manual vent fan. So this one gets pushed open and the little red button will turn it on. Once again, make sure you've got it shut if it starts to rain. Across the way, we've got your clothesline that can be stretched across and tightened down. This is good for your bathing suits or your dish towels, but nothing heavier than that. And please don't tow with anything hanging from there. It is going to cause some damage. Your shower head here has a pause feature, so you can pause that water as you soap up. It will help conserve the capacity of your gray tank. Finally, you will find the light switch on the outside, obviously to keep it from getting wet. Brian, come on in here and turn around. On the wall here, we've got the HVAC control, but below that, You've got a couple of switches. Of course, you've got the accent light switch is the silver one. So just a little rope accent across the cabinets. And then the overhead ceiling light is also on a dimmer switch. You'll see here on the bed, you've got your awning tool and also the manual crank for your stabilizers. We'll demo the awnings at the end of the video. Now, the HVAC control, when the backlight is dark, the first press of any of the buttons is simply going to turn that backlight on. So you'll end up pressing the buttons twice in a lot of cases. So backlight comes on and now the control panel is powered. Zone one is gonna be the bedroom, and zone two will be the rest of the trailer. So by mode, the first option we have is the air conditioner. Now these always go in the same order. Remember the air conditioners do not fire up immediately. It's gonna take just a few moments for it to charge the capacitors. It's also looking to make sure it has the appropriate amperage to fire up. You'll see a little hourglass here. Once the compressor kicks in, that hourglass disappear and the fan will come on before that. Give it just a few moments and it should fire up here. All right, there goes the fan. We're still waiting on the compressor. We'll give it just another minute here. All right, there goes the compressor right there. Now, if you'll note here at the bottom, you've got a fan symbol and it says auto. It is a three-speed fan. We're going to turn it down to low. These fans do not react immediately, so give it just a moment to catch up. But I want you to leave the fan in auto as the default. So that way, when you turn the control panel on, the fan does not come on immediately. Now, by mode, we've got another auto at the top. The auto at the top will automatically switch between the air conditioner and the heat pump, depending on your ambient temperature and what you've got the control panel set for. The heat pump is the next option. And it does make a little squishy sound when it switches over, so you can listen for that. Now, the heat pump is going to operate down to about 50 degrees ambient temperature. After that, you're going to want to switch over to the furnace. The furnace is going to be on zone two. So we're actually going to give it back to the air conditioner, switch zones. And because we're plugged into a 50 amp service, we'll be able to get both of these going at the same time. We're going to give it just a moment to catch up. All right, 
not, we're actually going to switch zones. We're going to cycle all the way through to off and shut this other zone off. And on zone two, we'll have the same options. So we have the auto at the top, and of course the heat pump after that. We'll give it just a second to squish over. Now on zone two, after the heat pump is where we'll find the furnace. The furnace is going to disable the overhead and it will come on down below separately. Please remember the furnace does not light immediately. It's going to take about 10 seconds. When it does, it will kind of wail at you when it starts burning that propane. If you are plugged into your shore service, you'll be able to turn on the overhead fan by selecting a fan speed and that will help draw that furnace air up into the ductwork and redistribute it throughout the trailer so that your trailer is nice and evenly heated. Again, always remember to return the fan to auto before you turn the control panel off. After the furnace on both zones, we've got a fan only option. You will have to select a speed to get that to work and then off. Make sure that both zones are off before you turn the control panel off so that way when you turn it back on, it doesn't come on to whatever you had been using previously. Now if you'll head back up to the front of the trailer with me, we will go over your fantastic exhaust fan. This is a fully powered fantastic fan. The switch to open the lid is right here. However, this switch is disabled when you have the speed on zero and it is enabled on one through three. So we'll put it on one and now it's gonna open the lid. Now the fan blade itself will actually be turned on from the switch over here. And remember, this is an exhaust fan, so it is drawing air out up to three speeds. Now the little red and blue knob is a little thermostat. So in between the clicks here, when the temperature crosses that threshold, it will turn itself off and on. It also has a built-in rain sensor. So if it gathers enough moisture, it's gonna close on its own. When it does, it will shut itself off. Please remember the lid is made of plastic. You do not want to tow with it open. It is gonna cause some damage. Now, back over here by the entry, next to the master disconnect is the control for your awning. This is for the curbside awning. When you are not actually running the awning in or out, I want you to make sure the control panel is turned off. So the first thing we're gonna do is turn the control panel on. Before you press open, I want you to press close. This, uh, as you're towing the trailer, the awning may come away from it, and these awnings have count memories in their motors. So in order to reset those, press close first, and then press open. Now the awning is so long, you will have to come down here to the end and give it a little help. You'll see it start to stack. Just give it a little pull right there. Now, if you remember to have the control panel, come back on over here. Brian, why don't you go ahead and hop up in there and I'll talk y'all through it. Now, this awning, like all the other awnings on your trailer, is a sun shade. So you can tilt it. We're going to press the tilt rear button. And if you'll look down there at the end, you see the rear end starting to come down. Now, I'm going to press it again and pause it. You can do so anywhere along that path if that is sufficient to block the sun, but to bring it back up, you've got to bottom it out first. So we'll finish bringing it down. And now we'll bring it back up. You will only be able to draw one side down at a time. Now we'll draw the front down. Now you will have difficulty getting the door shut with that front end drawn down. It is gonna collide with this piston up here at the top some. Make sure you're not scraping the door across the edge of that. Now this does not have a wind sensor or a rain sensor. It is a sunshade, so if the wind or rain picks up, you need to go ahead and fold it in. But if you do have one side or another down, you don't have to waste those moments by bringing it up first. Regardless of which side is down, you can simply press close and from there it will fold in. So we'll do that now. Also wanna mention the LED light strip across the top is on a dimmer switch and it's labeled right here inside the door. So you can dim that or turn it off completely. But remember, folding the awning in does not cause the light to go off, only the switch. Now, 
Now, let me grab a tool and we'll pull the other awnings out. All right, now the awning on the rear does not have a latch, so this one just gets pulled right out. Take the stalks and rotate them all the way around. They're too long to go this direction, so they have to go all the way around. And then, of course, your strap will roll up, and it'll capture back onto itself, just like so. Now, the two on the side here have these little hook style latches. You want to make sure you've disengaged them first. You're just going to rotate them out of the way, grab your strap, capture it on the hook here. Very simple. just like so. Now you can use the tool to put it away if you need to. Always run it to right about there and let it snap in those last couple inches so it's nice and tight. Please make sure you remember to re-engage your travel latches. Well folks, that's the end of the walkthrough. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions or have any recommendations on content you'd like to see, make sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. If you enjoy our content, Give us a like and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks again from Airstream EDFW.